Welcome to The Breakthrough, Journey to Success podcast sponsored by Operation Great Expectations. Join the OGE team while we interview Franklin alumni about their personal journey to success. Tune in to learn how they overcame obstacles in their path and became the person they are today. Listen, it get a hot outside. I'm in my bath all summer. Don't come around with no negativity. Get so long right, big motion. Uh, uh. Uh, uh. We laughing, we having fun, know you wanna laugh too If I was you, I was thin too We finna blow up like a balloon If you negative, then you can't come in this room We number one and we number two if we don't this guy, just we got each two Welcome to OGE Podcast Room What's up everyone, and thank you for tuning in to the Breakthrough Podcast I'm your host, Bryce, aka B Rice And joining me today, we have Chris Elijah, a.k.a. Breezy. Today, we have a special guest joining the OGE team. His name is Kyrie Harrison, a 2010 graduate from Franklin High School. Kyrie is a multi-talented creator who launched his first EP in 2015 entitled Homemade, in addition to four mixtapes, albums, and singles. Since then, he has used those talents to transition into a digital and social content creator. He is here today to share his Franklin journey with us and how he overcame some of the barriers along the way that has led to his success. I gotta find a way that I'ma need it, I get it. Seem the only car when I'm needed, I'm with it. Never judging for the thing that you're speaking, I listen. Every single line I ever wrote, sit. Every single time you think I'm dissing, listen. Never had a problem. Welcome to the show, Carice. Appreciate it, man. Thank y'all for having me, too, for real. Carice, can you tell us our can you tell our listeners what it was like going to Franklin High School in 2010? Uh a lot of big clothes. Um, you know, big clothes and, and dancing to franchise boys and stuff like that, and Jim Jones and all that was taking over, but uh, Franklin has always been like just a talented, diverse place, um, you know, and it's very like network heavy, and it, it was it was that then and it is still now. So that's what Franklin was like. All right. Did you always want to be in the music business? If so, did you take any classes in Franklin High School that prepared you for it? Um, I don't really want to say I wanted to be in any business. You know, I just I liked what I liked at the time that I liked. You know, um, music kind of just. I started out doing video with Mr. Penix, so music kind of just fell in my lap after high school with like shooting videos and stuff like that. So I was always around it, you know what I mean? Writing, picking from this artist and that artist and really putting myself together. And then it just happened. Did any of these like skills that you learned inside of aspects with Mr. Penix, did they assist you with what you're doing now? 100% because one thing, uh, I don't remember a lot, but one thing I do remember is uh, Penix telling us like in the first week of classes, uh, What's the story? Like, make it make sense, you know? And I took that approach with everything that I do. Like, and everything doesn't need, like, a story story, but it's just, like, make it make sense, you know? So whether I'm writing music or coming up with content for somebody else or films for myself, I take that same approach everywhere I go. Um, And that's with everything, not just content, but just life in general. Did you experience any barriers or obstacles while you were in in high school? And how did you overcome them? Um, I think my biggest barrier was myself. Number one, uh, I lacked a lot of confidence um, on top of just, like, not really coming from a family that's not really, like, arts heavy, not understanding what goes into it or what's necessary or what's needed as far as, like, just, you know, if you play a sport, your parents are investing that, your cleats, your camps, and things like that. When it comes to music or, you know, this entertainment type of genre that we're in, you're not going – chances are you won't get the same type of love because it's not understood yet, you know. So uh, that was probably my two biggest obstacles. What did you do after graduate? Did you go to college? Uh, yeah. When I graduated, um, I did my first year at uh, Shaw University in Raleigh, North Carolina, HBCU, and then I finished out at um William Patterson. Where's that at? William Patterson is uh Wayne, New Jersey. Patterson, New Jersey. It's like North. Yeah, North, North Jersey, mm-hmm. like an hour from here. Mm. Oh, not that far. Hour north, yeah, two eighty seven, all the way up. Yeah. Uh, not that far. How did college prepare you for your career? We we allowed to be honest. I I don't think it really did. Um, and I say that because Penix class was so advanced, I didn't take my college classes serious in a sense of the stuff we was learning in college. I had already did in 10th grade, you know what I'm saying? So like I'm sitting in class kind of just real lackadaisical. So I feel like post-college got me more prepared than anything because it was real life situation time now. Like, what am I going to do to get where I want to be? And that's where the internships came in. That's where me sleeping at Penn Station to go to Revolt, you know what I'm saying? And 
still only get an hour of sleep just to ride back to make my summer class and do the whole day over again. You know what I'm saying? Like that's that's where that came, like post post school, honestly. So would you say like high school prepared you more than college? A little bit, yeah. yeah. All right, all right. How all difficult right. was it for you after high school? I wouldn't say it was difficult. It just I one thing I regret about my past is just like I stayed in my box too much. You know, I I, I was always comfortable with being comfortable rather than trying new things. And I think that's what hindered me a lot of the time. When did you decide you wanted to pursue music? Um, I don't think I ever made a decision. Uh, shout out to a good friend of mine, uh, Sir Moore from Patterson, New Jersey. Um, I just was always writing just to express myself, like making music off to the side just for like me, for my safekeeping. And he just was like, yo, if you don't drop, I'm going to drop it. You know, so we just we went full fledged with it and it, it did what it was supposed to do from there. Um, honestly, music has been one of the biggest lessons that I've had because I didn't plan for it, but it's taken me places that I couldn't even imagine at this point. You know what I'm saying? So I'm thankful. When did you start taking the initiative to start stepping out of your box and do more, you know? Recently. Um, like when I say recently, I mean like the past like two, two, three years. Um, I was down, I've been living in Atlanta. Um, I was at uh, Savannah College of Art and Design to get my master's in film. Um, I was studying to be a cinematographer. That's what I do now. And um, it just was like, do you, what do you want? Do you want it or not? You know, like, and it's sometimes you got to, not sometimes, but all the time, you got to do some things that's uncomfortable to get where you want to be. And I think that's one of the things that I learned. I think secondly was uh, I learned what my faith in God is like, you know what I mean? Because a lot of the time it can feel uncomfortable what you're doing. It can feel like it's not right and you don't know what you're doing. But nine times out of ten, that's the right thing, you know, like, and it's just about trusting God. Like, if you notice what you, you're doing, what you're supposed to be doing, God will handle the rest. And I had to learn that. Got to be comfortable being uncomfortable. Exactly. In all scenarios, not just not just your work setting, but just everywhere. Yeah, like, in life in general. Yeah, that's where you grow at, you yeah, know. Yeah. So, um, Can you talk about talk about, about your first project? My first project? My yeah. first music project? Mm -hmm. um, homemade was, uh, like I said, at the time, I was just writing to just get a lot of the things off my mind and, you know, whatever I was feeling, X, Y, and Z. Um, my grandmother was sick, you know, so I was dealing with that heavy. And homemade was just everything that I up on everything that Franklin is, um, everything I've been surrounded by, which is family, home, community, and I built my entire base around that, like homemade music, homemade films, like everything is built back to that, because that's like the cornerstone, you know? So earlier you were talking about how your friend pushed you to like get to where you are. Did anybody else that you met along the way also prepare you for your first music project? Um, yeah, a lot. Of, a few individuals. Uh, Tyler Jackson was a big was a big help. Um, Karma, she's from Jersey City. She's a she's a singer, songstress, writer, and I think those I, I named those two more than anybody because as a rapper, I think you know out of my first three projects, my two were collab projects with each of them, and I think working with singers taught me how to fill out songs, like make them sound full and complete, and to use my vocals and to use my range and things like that. So it taught me early in where I was 10 steps ahead of a lot of people already, you know? How did you feel when you finally um, released your first EP? I felt good. Like, it's something that I, it's a feeling I still carry because I think one thing that I lacked in high school, especially living in, like, my older brother kind of shadow, was, like, confidence of being myself. And with music, like, when I became soulful, so to speak, it was just like, yeah, this is, this feel good. Like, I like what I'm getting back. People, you know, seeing me for who I am and what I do now, you know? What what made you want to get into music? Honestly speaking, rapper yeah. to rapper, yeah, I knew I was nice. <laughs> For real, and, and I'm not even gonna say a lie to you. Like it was one of them things where like I kept questioning it, and I'm listening to everybody else. Like yo, you 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 hard, you hot, and then it was once that moment hit with like yeah, I'm nice. Like so, you use that as motivation. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. I don't let anybody like. Music taught me to lock, not let nobody knock me off my pedestal. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I am who I am, and yeah. I know what I'm great at, and I'm not going to apologize for being great at what I'm great at. Yeah, yeah. You know? No. And just keep you full on the neck. That's it. You know, you just drive and push. What were the highs and lows of your first public music performance? The highs and lows. Um, The highs was, was the feedback, obviously. Like, the feedback was phenomenal. Um, Having people reach out from other countries and stuff like that is amazing. Um, The lows was probably just... Like, I'm a very honest artist, and so, you know, some people was hurt by some of the things I had to say and things like that, but, it, you know, it gave a moment of clarity. It gave a moment of realness, so I think that was the lowest part because it was just hard having certain conversations post my, post my project. Um, what led to your transition from music to what you're doing now? Um, so there, 
it's it's like a funny transition. Like I I didn't know balance when I was younger. So like I started out doing video, you know, with Penix and stuff like that. And then I went into music and then back into film. And I think I just didn't know balance. I thought I had to give everything. I thought I had to give one thing my all and I didn't have to do that. Um and again, same thing with filming. It was just like I'm nice. Like why not keep doing this and really study and hone in on my craft, you know? So that was it. Went down to Atlanta and um Scad, and then that from there went to you know rap snack commercials, Google commercials, Rick Ross's house. You know what I mean? Like everything just started going from there, and that's when I knew I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. How did Franklin um inspire your music? How did Franklin inspire yeah, my music? Yeah, it's home. You know, it don't get no more you know inspirational than that. Like, and when I say home, like you know, home is you know your first time playing somewhere, your first fist fight, your first you know girlfriend, mm-hmm. whatever. It's home, you know. Uh, so that was easy. It just it just comes. I know I'm Franklin. And that's what it is. So you feel love everywhere I go here. Yeah, feel, feel love and respect everywhere. Yeah, I feel you. It, it be like that. You gotta give love to get it too, though. You know. Yeah. yeah. You, what you want, you gotta give it. Mm-hmm. Do you feel like Franklin has changed at all over the years? I mean, honestly speaking, I'm not around as much to really um, to really say. I know my my brother. I get to kind of see it through him because he graduated in 2020. Um, so I can't really say, you know, like just a different era. Everywhere has changed. It's 2023, you know, I can't really give no feedback on that. It's y'all like, time. You know what I mean? Like, that's all. I, I want you to name your top five rappers. I take Jay-Z. Mm-hmm. I take, uh, Kendrick. Mm-hmm. I take, um, Method Man. Mm-hmm. I take Absol, cause that's where my name come from. And at five, I take me. Oh, that's you. Okay. You want to know mine? Mine is, um, I got Chopper at number one. NLE? Yeah. Come on, man. We got to do some education. <laughs> we got to do some education. Uh, this, man. Then at number two, I got Durkio. Um, All right. Then at number three, I have uh my brother. You know, that that's who motivates me to do music. Mm-hmm. I started from, from him, him and my uncle mm-hmm. and my pops. They all did music together. And, um... Being around my brother in the studio, that you no, know, I picked up from there. Mm-hmm. Um, I also I would say young boy, but it's his fan base. That's 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 what that's what. No. So before you finish your list, y'all ask me like, have times changed between you? That's the difference. <laughs> you know, like the musical influence is the difference. You yeah, know? yeah, like like it's his fan base. Like, mm-hmm. it, it, oh, let's see. Uh, I'll say like G Herbo. I'll say G Herbo. You know, I like that pick. Yeah, G Herbo. Yeah, I say G Herbo because it's some of his songs is like, uh, but you got to pick the right one. G Herbo so. really can rap. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I like G Herbo a lot. Like nice five. See the difference in time periods in the top five. Yeah, you know yeah, I mean? like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But what's funny is I don't. Those are my top five. But mm-hmm. if you get in my car, I'm playing everything that you said. Yeah, yeah. So. I feel you. Yeah. I feel you. Yeah. Balance. I feel you. Yeah. yeah. You want to talk about how you got your name from Absol? Did you get it from anywhere else? Like, did anything else have an influence uh, on it? Being an old head, old soul. <laughs> uh, when I was in, when I was in Willie, William, William Patterson, um, they used to always call me the old head of my suite because, like, I'd be playing like Smokey Robinson, Temptations, like all the good stuff. You know what I mean? And it was like, oh, you got an old soul. You know, your soul full. And then Ab Soul was like one of my biggest inspirations. So everybody started calling me Soul. And then from there, it just went to Soulful. What's your favorite genres? Music? Yeah. Uh, R&B. You know, like, because with y'all era of music, music getting tiring. It just is. You know what I mean? Like, it's kind of just repetitive. So I listen to a lot of rap. I mean, a lot of R&B right now. Like um, R&B or just like old soul music. Like I said, like, I'm going to probably play Temptations every day. That's just what it is. Like, David Ruffin, if you go on my page, it literally says Soulful Ruffin. You know what I mean? Like, so, I don't know. That's that's all I really listen to. Be in my room, listen to Brushing Teller, low key. Yeah, see? You know, but I need to expand my music, because shout out to another alumni from class of 2010, um, Saze. I just recently was in the studio with him, and he's just like a musical genius. I just want to give him his flowers on that, because there's not a genre of music he doesn't listen to. There's not an artist he doesn't listen to. And it shows in his production when he makes his own beats, and it shows in how he raps and writes his music. And I think that that's amazing. I'm back and I'm better. Mm-hmm. What else? I want you bad as ever. What else? <laughs> <laughs>
Oh, what advice you would give your younger self if you were still in high school? Stop being scared. That's it. I feel like a lot of the thing. I feel like when I look at myself now, if I had the mindset I have right now at 31, back when I was just even leaving high school, I know for a fact I'd be in a whole different position. You know, whatever that position may be, I just know I'd be somewhere different because it's my, my your mindset is everything. I don't care what you're doing. Your mind is everything. Your mind is your strongest tool, and it's also your biggest weapon against yourself. You feel me saying? So I would just tell myself, do not give up. Do not quit. Be confident. Trust in who you are. So you said don't be scared. What what was the fear you had? I don't know, man. I think the fear for me was just like exposing myself that much. Like music is very as a very vulnerable state. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like you're very exposed. And I think I didn't like that mm-hmm. uh for a long time for people to maybe see me for who I am or something like that, you know? Um or just I don't know, man. Just I just afraid of my own greatness, like whatever it was. Like for me to sit back and know that I'm great at these things, but I don't want to give them off to the world. It's like, what mm-hmm. you scared of, you know? And it just became one of them things, like jump off the cliff. And now with everything I do, I just jump off the cliff. Yeah. So you, were you scared of putting out your music? That's what like putting that fear. Yeah, absolutely. Even even still now, like right now, I'm dealing with the fear of, you know, releasing my first short film, you know, and it's mm-hmm. just like. What are people going to think about it? How are they going to feel when it look? And, you know, it's just, it's always a fear because you have a certain mindset of how you see things working out and how they're going to be and things like that. But everybody else don't see it like that for you. We're running out of time, but I'd like to thank our guest, Kyrie's Harrison, a.k.a. Soulful, for stopping by and sharing his journey with us. How can people get in touch with you if they would like to listen to your music and follow your career? Um, First of all, first and foremost, thank y'all for having me. Um, If they want to follow me, they can follow me at, at S-O-U-L. H O M D or at a dope black kid. Thank you, Kyrie, for joining us. And we also want to thank our listeners for tuning in to our third podcast. And don't forget to subscribe, like, and follow on all of our social media platforms. Please join us next week where we'll interview another Franklin alum. I'm Bryce. I'm Chris. I'm Elijah, aka Breezy. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram, yfn.breezy. And we'll see you next time on The Breakthrough. Listen, it a hot outside. I'm in my bath all summer. Don't come around with no negativity. Get so long right. Big motion. Uh, 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 uh. We laughing, we having fun. No, you wanna laugh too. If I was you, I was in tune. We finna blow up like a balloon. If you negative, then you can't come in this room. We number one and we number two. If we don't just got just we got each two. Welcome to OGE Podcast Room.